ان الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله صلوات الله وسلامه عليه اما بعد فان اصدق الحديث كتاب الله وخير الهدي هدي محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر الامور محدثاتها وكل محدثه بدعه وكل بدعه ضلاله وكل ضلاله في النار الله سبحانه وتعالى منشن في سوره الفرقان وإذا رأوك إن يتخذونك إلا هزوا When they see you, they take you as a joke They make fun of you What do they say? أهذا الذي بعث الله رسولا Is he really the one that Allah has sent as a messenger? When they see you, they make mockery of you is this the one that Allah has sent as a messenger? And with this ayah, my dear brothers in Al-Islam, I want to discuss what I'm sure many of us have seen or all of us have seen, and that is the cartoons of the Prophet وسلم, being promoted by these evildoers and the shayateen in France. In reality, the disbelievers, the allies of a shaytan they have been ridiculing and mocking the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam ever since Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala sent him as a prophet and as a messenger. They used to call him a madman. They would say he is a man who is possessed. They would say that he is a poet. They would say that he is somebody who is mentally unstable. They would say that he's a liar. They would say that he's only writing down what somebody else is telling him. And they used to mock him, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And in fact, this is not only the case for our Messenger Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Allah Tabarak Wa Ta'ala mentions about Nuh Alayhi Salatu Wasalam Wa Yasna'u Al-Fulk that he started to build the ark. And it was Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala who commanded him to do so. Wa kullama marra alayhi mala'un min qawmihi sakhiru min. And any time one of the leaders or the chiefs of the people, they passed by him whilst he was making his ark, they would mock him. They would make jokes about him. And they would laugh at him. Qala in minna. If Allah says that Nuh said to them, the way that you are joking about me and us, فَإِنَّا نَسْخَرُ مِنْكُمْ كَمَا تَسْخَرُونَ the way you're joking about us and you're laughing and mocking us right now, then we are going to mock you the way you used to mock us. That there's going to come a time where we're going to have the last laugh, in other words. And as they say, the one who lasts, the one who laughs last, he laughs the longest. And so this was something which is known from the disbelievers, that they would mock the prophets Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says indeed the prophets who came before you O Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam many of them were mocked many of them were mocked and then the mockers they were overtaken by the thing that they mocked they used to joke about it, joke about the punishment, etc. And then they were overtaken by it. In fact, some of the prophets and messengers, they weren't just mocked. Some of them were even killed and murdered. 
because of the message that they came with. And this is well known from a certain group of people that every time a prophet would come to them and they didn't like what he came with, then they would deny some of them and others from amongst them, they would kill them. And so prophets were killed before Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And so this is not something strange. It's not something new. And honestly, it's not something that should surprise us. This is the way of the disbelievers, that they would mock and joke and laugh about the prophets of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. In reality, these French cartoons that we have of the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa and the mockery that we have, it doesn't harm Allah nor does it harm the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa in the slightest. Imam Muslim records on the authority or on the authority of the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa in a hadith Qudsi that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, O oh my servants, you will not harm me and you will not be able to benefit me in anything. O oh my servants, if the first of you and the last of you and the humans from amongst you and the jinn from amongst you, if all of you were as pious as the most pious person, then it would not increase my kingdom in anything. O oh my servants, if all of you, the first of you, the last of you, the jinn from amongst you and the people from amongst you, if you all possess the worst heart, if you are all as evil as each other, as the most evil person, it would not decrease my kingdom in the least. O oh my servants, if the first of you and the last of you and the humans of you and the jinn from amongst you, if you were all to stand in one place together and you were to ask of me and I was to give every single one of you what he asked, it would not decrease my kingdom even as much as a needle which is dipped into the ocean, the amount of water that comes out on that needle. Meaning, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is free and above and he has no need of anything. And so we cannot and they do not harm Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the slightest. And they do not harm the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in the slightest. Everywhere, all over this world, every single moment, somebody is mentioning his name sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and muhammad means the one who is praised alayhi salatu was salam the one who is receiving praise and he is praised constantly his names are called out from the member his names are called out from the pulpit his name is remembered and mentioned in the adhan somewhere somewhere Someone is talking about Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and is praising him. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Wallahu ya'asimuka min al-nas. Allah will save you from the people. And so in reality, my brothers, this is not something which harms Allah. It does not harm the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. But it raises some important points and some important issues. The first of those is the double standards and the hypocrisy of these people. The double standards and the hypocrisy of these people. That if you were to utter a single word against a Jewish man, then immediately you're shut down and you're labeled anti-Semitic. You utter something even indirectly against a Jew and you're closed down. You say not even something against a homophobic person, but you just say, that's not for me. You say something that doesn't agree with the agenda of homophobia, LGBTQ, ABC, and you're shut down. Yet you can mock at Islam you can mock the Prophet of Islam, the Prophet of Allah, 
alayhi salatu wasalam, and it's called freedom of speech. Freedom of speech. As if the freedom of speech is only freedom of speech when it's for them. The freedom of speech is only freedom when it goes with their agenda. The freedom of speech is only allowed when it's for them and not against them. And you can draw the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and it's freedom of expression. Wallahi, if I just drew something and I said this is Adolf Hitler and I praised it, I'd get shut down. Where's the freedom of expression gone? Where's the freedom of speech gone? Where's our ability to laugh and joke at each other as they say, you have to lighten up a little bit. But when it's not for them, then there is no freedom. But when it's against the Muslims, then it's freedom of speech and it's freedom of expression. And we need to lighten up. This is a hypocrisy which as the time goes on, it only gets clearer and clearer. So when a Muslim goes out and he commits a murder, then it's terrorism. But if somebody who is a non-Muslim comes out and he kills 50 people more or 50 times the amount of people, then he's a lone warrior, then he is somebody with a mental illness. And this hypocrisy by these French people and this French government is clear, is clear as day. And so the Muslim, the one who has an intellect, he's not fooled by this. The second thing, it highlights, my dear brothers, the animosity of the disbelievers. That they have animosity. These people, they'll hide it behind a smile. They'll hide it behind democracy and freedom of expression and acceptance. But there is hatred, real hatred. When it comes down to it, there is real hatred for Islam, for Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, for the deen of Allah, tabaraka wa ta'ala. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, min afwahihim, that hatred has prejudice, has become evident from their tongues. وَمَا تُخْفِي صُدُورُهُمْ أَكْبَرُ But what is in their hearts is even worse. The hatred that has come onto their tongues it's not matched by the hatred that they have in their hearts. And this is something which is clear as day. Ikhwani fillah, so the question then remains, but what should we do then? We know Allah, we know his messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam are free of it. You know, the man who curses or mocks Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, his example is the example of a man who looks up at a shining star in the night sky and he spits at it. What's going to happen? His spit is only going to land on his own face and the star is unaffected. Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is that star. That's his likeliness. Alayhi salatu wasalam. Shining bright, untouchable. But subhanallah, the one who curses him or mocks him, then the destruction is going to come on that person. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is not going to leave that person. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is not going to just allow that person to carry on. And so what should we do then? What should our approach to this be? The first thing, my dear brothers, and I say this especially to our youngsters, is that you should be proud of your Islam. Don't let anybody ever try to make you feel like a second class citizen because of your Islam. The best thing that you have is your Islam. Don't let anybody lecture you on morals and etiquettes. Do you know that French, that French president when he was 15 years old, he had an affair with his teacher who was about 20 years older than him. And she left her husband who she had kids with to come and be with him. But subhanallah, how is the one who is bankrupt and who has nothing, how can he give you something? Your morals, your etiquettes, your compass of what is right and wrong, what is acceptable and unacceptable, don't take it from the society. Because the society today says no, 
this is wrong and then society today says no this is right and you can't even say a word against it so take your right and your wrong and your good and your bad from the quran and from the sunnah and hold your head up high because you are part of the deen which has been come which has been sent by allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and it's the only religion that's going to be acceptable in front of him yawm al qiyamah and take that approach that Nuh alayhi salatu wasalam said, if you're mocking at us now and you're laughing at us now, I promise you there's going to come a time where we're going to laugh at you. There's going to come a time where you're going to be the one that's going to be laughed at. So hold your heads up high and be proud of your Islam. And don't let anybody make you feel like a second class citizen as a result of you being a Muslim. The second thing is that they are trying to distance you from the sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. They're trying to distance you from the way that he came with, by attacking him. You can't attack the message, so you attack the messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And this is a well-known well uh, uh, strategy that they have. And so, Ikhwani Fillah, you need to know that safety, security, success, it lies in following the way of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam. Happiness in this life and in the akhirah. Happiness in this world and in the next. And don't ever think that there is a way that is better than the way that Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam came with. You're going to come across doubts. They're going to put doubts into your head. Yeah, but what about this and what about that? And if you don't have the answer to the doubt, that doesn't mean that you leave your religion and you renegade. You turn back on your heels. If you don't have the answer to the doubt straight away, go out and research the answer to the doubt. Because every single doubt that these people try to come with, there is an answer which overpowers it and overwhelms it in its truthfulness and in its common sense approach. Because Islam, doesn't only appeal to the fitra, it appeals to the intellect as well. Ikhwani fillah, you have social media platforms. And today, social media is a very powerful tool. Use your social media platforms to speak out about this hypocrisy and this wrongdoing. Call them out and use it to have your voice heard. Because one voice on its own is not that powerful. But millions of voices together, they have an impact by the permission of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So use your social media for good. Use your social media to call out this hypocrisy. Use it so that the people around you, they see that the Muslims are not just gonna take this line down. And alhamdulillah, it's a good sign that we are as angry and as upset as we are. It shows that we still have love for our Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. It shows that we still want to protect the honor of our Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And so let's show these people that this is not something that we're just going to take lying down. Ikhwani Fillah, use your social media and use whatever means you have available to you to speak out against this and have your voice heard. وآخر دعوانا أن الحمد لله رب العالمين بسم الله الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وأصحابه من ولا another thing that you may want to do if one if you learn something that has been discussed and is going around is the boycotting of their products the boycotting of their products now let's be real with ourselves these people they don't worship Allah they don't worship this or that they worship the dollar and they worship the pound and the euro they worship money and so if we have a way to hit them where it hurts then this is something that we can do but i want to put an important note on this that if you take the position that boycotting is good and boycotting is something which we should do but then your brother sat next to you takes the opinion that actually no it's it's not gonna benefit or I'm not going to boycott. This is not a reason and it is not permissible for you to say to him, you don't love the Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam or you don't do this or you don't do that. And what you have to see 
is that this is an issue where both sides have a strong case. Both sides can argue their case and they both have a point. And so if we are going to have a united effort, then Alhamdulillah, it's going to hit them in their pockets. And this is where it hurts them the most. And that is something if you want to do it, then go ahead. But like I said, it's not permissible for you to become suspicious or for you to speak bad about another Muslim who doesn't take that approach. And ultimately, Ikhwani Fillah, the disbelievers, what is it that they dislike the most is the Tawheed of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And so if the Muslims were to come back to Tawheed and come back to the Sunnah, this is what they dislike the most. But we don't do it because we want to scorn them or because we dislike them. We are doing it because in it is salvation and safety for ourselves, our families and our communities. And so Ikhwani Fillah, do not allow these cartoons to dishearten you. Rather, they should make you cling to your religion firmer and stronger than you were to before. You young brothers, don't let these cartoons and similar things because wallahi, if we live longer than the end of this week, there's going to be something new that comes out. There's going to be a new scandal. There's going to be a new mockery of Islam. Don't make it question your deen or make you, uh, you know, apologetic. Don't become an apologetic Muslim. Be somebody who is proud. Hold your head high and don't apologize for your deen. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to keep us firm on, on Islam. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that he raises us with the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and those companions. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that he makes us people who are proud of our deen and that we push forward his tawheed and the sunnah of his messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam subhana rabbika rabbil izzati amma yasifun wa salamun ala al-mursaleen walhamdulillahi rabbil alameen establish the prophet